Recently on the channel, I reviewed the Razer Kishi Pro controller, and the whole purpose I was looking at that controller was to use an iPad mini to be able to create a better version of the PlayStation Portal. And when I say better version, I mean something that will play PlayStation streaming, but also work on other platforms as well. And if you haven't seen the video, the thing worked awesome, the controls were great, but it had two main downsides. The first one was the price. It's a premium controller, but it's definitely at a premium price. And the second problem was it was USB-C, so that restricts what you can actually connect to it. And today we're going to be taking a look at the GameSir G8 Plus Galileo wireless gaming controller, and I believe this is going to solve both of those problems. But we're going to have to see if it lives up to the rest of the qualities of the Razer Kishi Pro. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the GameSir G8 Plus Galileo Wireless Mobile Game Controller. And from the picture here, you can tell it's going to be a mobile gaming controller that's a little bit bigger. We've got full-size controls here. It's going to be able to hold a bigger screen. And the plan is to use a iPad Mini, again, to create the ultimate portable gaming device. Now, we're not going to be limited to just the iPad Mini, but that's what I'm going to focus on. We're going to check out some other devices also, but I think we all realize that you wouldn't be buying this if you had to already buy an iPad Mini. This is more of a, hey, I've got the iPad Mini, let's get a great controller for it. Now, like I said, we've got other options to put inside there, of course, a phone, but because this is Bluetooth, it's going to open itself up to a lot of options. So let's start off by checking out some of the features that are listed on the box. So let's flip this around real quick and take a look at the back. We'll go around here. It says Hall Effect Sticks, and that's pretty much something that you want to see on any type of quality device these days. To go along with that, we've got Hall Effect Triggers there on the far right, and then we've got, it says, Removable and Replaceable Gaming Grade Membrane Buttons. And I think we're going to be able to take this thing apart and flip these buttons around. We'll check that out. Down here at the bottom, it says Tactile D-Pad, Crisp and Comfortable asymmetrical motors, real sensation, two mappable back buttons, and laser engraved textured grips. Let's see if there's anything else listed on the box here. Oh, down on the bottom here, what do we got? So Bluetooth 2.4 gig and wired. This is gonna be primarily a Bluetooth controller, but it looks like maybe we can use a cable to plug it into something. Swappable A, B, X, Y buttons. Hall effect sensing sticks. Controller supported games playable. Compatible length 110 to 215 millimeters, and that is something, like I said, that is pretty new in these mobile controllers. Most of them were made for, like, phone size, but now we're starting to see ones that will hold small tablets, and that's great. And then share your highlights. So it looks like we've got a couple thumbstick options that may come with it, and yeah, it looks like a quality device. Looks like it's got some good features. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and check it out. All right, so in the box, we've got the controller itself. And this box here is probably manual and cable, if I had to guess. Yep, there's a cable. There's some manuals. We'll check those out. Looks like we got a couple thumbstick options here. And we saw in the box that it's supposed to be pretty easy to swap out these buttons here. So I'm guessing we'll be able to swap out the thumbsticks just as easily. So let's go ahead and grab this out of the box. And this is definitely a full-size controller, like holding just this right here before we even put anything in there. Holding this feels just as comfortable as like an Xbox controller. So I've got some decently large hands and this seems like it would be a perfect size for me. And let's see how wide this thing opens up. Yep, that's definitely going to be long enough for an iPad. And I saw this thing start to to blink here so I guess once you start opening up maybe it goes into pairing mode but looks like we've got some decent thumbsticks they seem like a pretty long throw just just in this little limited amount of movement I'm doing here the buttons feel good the ABXY buttons feel good we got you know start and select type buttons up here those are fine what do we got down here an M and then maybe like a home button and then this is the game sir button. And then here's the D-pad. Feels good enough. I'll have to test it out with some games. On the shoulders here we've got L1, R1, 
L2, R2. And these are Hall Effect sensors here on the triggers. But yeah, it feels good. And we do have right down here those extra mappable buttons. And I do like this texture. They called it laser engraved texture. I'm not sure. Um, I don't care who puts it on there, how it gets on there, but the texture is is nice, definitely. And it gives a good contrast between the, the grip that you got on it and the smoothness of these L4 and R4 buttons here. So yeah, good feeling controller. Down at the bottom here, we've got a USB-C input, and it looks like maybe a pairing button of some sort. Now, one downside of this is going to be there won't be any pass-through charging, obviously. Without the USB-C connector here, like the Razer Kishi Pro had, you won't be able to plug in here and charge. And I always hear that listed as, as a downside, which, you know, it, it can be, depending on how long you're going to be gaming. But in all seriousness, if you've got a tablet or a phone, a modern phone in this thing, and you're playing long enough to kill that phone, it's probably time to take a break and just charge that phone or tablet anyways, because you're playing way too long. So yeah, good looking controller, feels good. Let's go ahead and get something popped in there. All right, so starting off with my iPad mini in here, and this is a sixth generation iPad mini, which is the same one that I used on the Razer Kishi Pro. And we're starting off with the PlayStation streaming app. So this is always a challenge to get my hands in here into the camera without uh, making it too uncomfortable. But we're looking less at how well the streaming service and how well the games play. We know what the, how the games are going to play. You know, that's going to be dependent on the device. We're looking mostly at the controls themselves and how they work. Now this showed up when I paired it as a PlayStation controller. So it's playing just fine on this, uh, this game, of course. Now I would never play uh, Astro Bot for a long period of time with this type of controller. Because that's just a disservice to the game itself. This game really needs to be played on a DualSense uh, controller because of all the neat stuff that it does. But just to test this out, streaming it over my local area here with uh, PlayStation 5. And everything's working great. Now, I don't feel like there's any motion control. I played through a whole level of this earlier to test out this controller. And the parts where you're supposed to be able to move your controller around I didn't see it so I'm not sure if that's a PlayStation thing or if that's a controller thing it wasn't listed in any of the features but we'll test it out once we hook up something else but yeah this feels like a, a big boy controller like it should it's a, a good now obviously this isn't the optimal angle for me to hold it at but even when I was playing it earlier I did enjoy the feel of it it's a good controller it's a good size, and no complaints on that. Now, to give you an idea of how much size you get to play with here, this is a, like I said, iPad Mini 6. And if I go ahead and pull this out some more without turning the game off, you can see I've got another inch and a half there. So it'll hold uh, a, a decent size, probably 7 or 8 inch tablet. This, of course, is an 8 inch screen. Some of the Android tablets may be 16 by 9, so they may be a little bit wider than they are tall. But it should hold a, a pretty decent sized tablet, not a full-size iPad, of course. Now, one thing to note on this iPad Mini, there is like one spot to put it where you can still get to the volume controls and it's not smashing the power button in by the, uh, the grip itself. But once it's in there, it's definitely in there strong. And I think this is probably the perfect device for it. So let's get out of this PlayStation app real quick and test something else out. All right, so next up, I wanted to try something that used the D-pad here. So of course, you gotta grab some kind of a retro game. And I've got some Load Runner here loaded up, pun intended. And I'm not gonna attempt to play it while I'm talking to you, but I've just spent the last 10 minutes or so testing it out. And the D-pad, I can tell you at first, I thought it was a little too clicky. And you can, you can hear that. And an uh, unforgiving game like this, with ladders and stuff, I was hitting some accidental diagonals. So I was trying to run right, but it was going up a ladder every now and then. And really, it just took a couple minutes to get used to it. And once I got used to it, then it was fine. This is level 6 here. And I haven't played this game in a while, so I wasn't expecting to get to level 6 just by playing around with it. 
but I was having so much fun that I just kept on playing. And the more I played, the more I got used to the D-pad. And before you knew it, it was just uh, it was just good to go. So the B, the A, B, X, Y buttons still feel great. The D-pad started off a little rocky, but I got it going good. And seeing something like this kind of blows my mind, or at least it would have blown my uh, 10-year-old mind if I thought that someday I'd be able to play a Nintendo game on something this thin and portable. But this is just an amazing experience, and we're just living in a, a pretty cool time. All right, so here is the next best use case for this controller, and that's just slapping it on a switch. Since there is no USB-C connector protruding out of the right side here, we can put anything we want in the middle. So this uh, has a switch mode, and it paired up perfectly, and now everything works great, including, if I go into this mode here, so yes, there is actually gyro function. So I wasn't seeing that before with the PlayStation, but I might not had it set up right because as you noticed I went straight into this thing without uh, even looking at the book so after reading the book a little bit there's a lot of information in there how to switch the pairing mode on this into a couple different configurations uh, there's one for DS4 controls there's one for switch controls there's one for Android controls and it's all a series of button you know combinations of holding down this button here and then one of the four buttons up here to get into a different mode of pairing and the light on the game sir button down here will actually glow a different color depending on which mode it's in. So don't throw away those instructions. Very helpful. And this right here, I'm not usually a handheld user of the Switch just because I just hate these guys here. But with this controller on it, it actually feels like it's supposed to be a, a gaming machine and not a toy. So I could easily play the Switch for a long period of time with this kind of controller. It's very comfortable. It works great. It's got all the functions you need. It just works. Now in the process of going through and testing all this stuff out and just jumping right into it, I forgot to show you what's inside the box. Of course, I showed you that this probably had a cable in it. And yes, it does have this cable here, which is a USB-A to USB-C cable. And that would be for both charging the controller itself, because again, this is a Bluetooth controller, which means it's got a battery in it, which means it needs to be charged every now and then. But you could also use this to plug it into any of the devices we've talked about. You could plug this into the Switch dock. Now, of course, this is not a long enough cable to do that. But you could use a cable to plug this controller into the Switch dock and use this in a wired mode. I'm sure you could probably plug it into other devices like Android, maybe iOS, and use it as a wired controller also. But all the time I've been playing it with the Bluetooth, I haven't seen any need to actually hook it up wired. The lag is extremely minimal. So I'm not even worried about that part. All right, the next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to change out these buttons and these thumbsticks. So all you got to do is just kind of grab one of the edges here with your thumbnail. And these covers are just held on by a bunch of tiny little magnets. And that gets you right to the thumbsticks, which just come off easy like that. Just pop another one on. And then the same thing with these guys. They are... Not quite as easy as grab as a, a thumbstick, but they are just magneted on also. So tiny little magnet in there, and it's keyed a certain way that it's not going to let you put the B on, you know, crooked or anything. And it just snaps on there. So swap these around if you want to. And then when you're done, just grab the plate. And no snapping or anything. It just magnets right back on, ready to go. Same thing on the left side here. You can get on here to switch out that thumbstick just as easily. So that's about as far as I want to get into a review. Like I said, we're reviewing the controller itself, not all the different systems that you can play on it. And my initial plan was to see if this controller would solve those two problems that I said that I found with the Razer Kishi Pro. And that was the price, and this is definitely solves that problem. This one is, when it's on sale, about half the price is the Razer Kishi Pro. Now I'm sure that Razer is going to go down eventually, but right now, about half the price, this one's going to win in that value category. And the other concern I had about the Razer Kishi Pro was the USB-C connector, which is a good thing because it's a wired connection and it allows pass-through charging. But at the same time, it really limits what you can put in this thing. You can't put a switch in there. You can't put an older version of the iPad Mini. With this one, you could go with the iPad Mini 5, which is a lot cheaper. Probably plays... 99% of the games that the iPad Mini 6 can, and it's going to look just as good. 
So the only downside of this versus that Razer Kishi Pro, yes, you have to charge it because it is Bluetooth. It is Bluetooth, so you have to pair it to different things instead of just plugging it right in. But I don't think those two things make the Razer Kishi Pro worth twice as much as this Galileo. So I think that's pretty much going to sum up this video. Very happy with it. It feels great. It works great. It's very capable of many different systems, and it's a great value. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. Check out the rest of the channel. Lots of reviews there on controllers and all kinds of other geeky stuff. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.